emergency, multiple accident at Route 17 and Green Street off ramp. Juniper from Cisco, this is Roy and Harris. Looks worse than we thought. Better get your boys over here. Chopper 1, please stand by. We have an emergency. Cisco, please inform the fire department we have gasoline spill on the road. Trooper Harris to Chopper 1, what's your ETA? Chopper 1 here should be at the scene in about 3 or 4 minutes. And Cisco, I should be back there from the accident site. Nobody believes him, you know. Other doctors, hospital administrators, they fight him. They think he's dangerous. He feeds on the conflict and pushes harder. It only hurts him. Well, things are pretty different around here, and it's exciting, but the medicine is upside down. I sure hope he's right. Oh, he is right. Well, I believe he's right. He's got rules, but there is own rules for this kind of medicine. Nobody believes him because he... He pushes them. He, he threatens egos. You know, Tex, when we started out in the 60s, no one thought there was a problem until Dr. Cowley told them there was a problem. You know, for people under 30, trauma is the biggest killer. Accidental injury. Car accidents are the worst. It's just a... Well, it's a big problem. It touches everybody. Oh, it's a, a friend or a relative. And doctors just seem to accept that when a person was that badly hurt, they, they died. Everybody thought that but R. Adams Cowley. Back then, there were just a few of us. Cowley and I, a young nurse, Jill, <laughs> Jill Jackson. And we had one bed in a little corner of University Hospital. They'd only send us patients they thought were too far gone. They called us the death lab. Dr. Cowley had a, an unorthodox philosophy. People shouldn't die. Well, of course they shouldn't die, but they do. No, I mean it. There's got to be a way to stop it, to get in the way of the process, to keep the process of dying from continuing. We're seeing the worst of it right here in our little corner. Yeah, we sure got our share of it. Other hospitals only send us the worst. They only trust us with the ones they can't save. No wonder they call us the death lab. Okay, Bob, that's it. Pressure's nearly flat. Let's get this guy into the x-ray. He's too far gone. I've got to get to the others. You can't just leave him. Take him to Cowley's death lab. They live? Yeah. Okay. Here we I go. think the ones who are okay. too dead to go anywhere else okay. and too alive to bury. Come on, let's go. Vital signs. Pressure is just about flat. Peripheral pulse is very weak. You know, every time someone came into that lab, it was a new challenge to us. You see, we had to fight to prove that we could keep trauma victims alive. That we could do what nobody else could do. Uh-oh. Good chance the liver's lacerated. All right, prep him in the OR. 
Send a blood sample up to hematology right away. And wait for a cross -man. Thanks, Dr. McCall. I'm happy you're helping. Uh, Dr. Cowley, I cannot assist you in a... Look! He's got no blood pressure. We've got no anesthesiologist. Now, either you help, or he dies. Come with me, Dr. McCall. His name? John Grady, white male, parent age 32. Mm. What have we got? Multiple fractures. Tibia, femur, flail chest, upper vertebrae, skull, probably no neurological trauma. Puncture wounds in the lower abdomen, lots of them. He must have fallen on something sharp. Mm. Better be internal trauma, bleeding. And I'm ready to go in, Dr. McCall. Is that the total diagnosis? I don't know if the man's allergic to anything. That's battlefield medicine. We have no choice, because otherwise he'll surely die. Well, all right. The patient is sedated, but he's not very stable. Here we go, John Grady. Yes, we know how. You stay with us, you hear? He's still losing blood. Pressure's down again. He's on the edge. Liver's perforated, too. He's leaking in a dozen places. All right, then pack him. Get it stopped. Don't worry about being neat. Blood pressure's falling. Will you get him packed? Doctor, I've only got two hands. Here, give me some room. Wait a minute. You don't have the experience yet. Now back off! and get that blood hung and get me some suction. Are you still with us? Yeah, he's young and strong. They give up too easily downstairs. All we gotta do now is keep you alive, Grady. We will. Excuse me, Doctor. I'm Carol. Uh, uh, Mrs. John Grady. We've been here waiting to hear news about my husband for quite some time. I'm He's sorry. Always... I'm not a doctor. I'm the hospital administrator. Well, maybe you can tell us what's happening to my son. All they told us is they're operating on him. They sent us up here. Where are we? Well, it's a special unit. I'm sure he's getting the best of care. Uh, Mrs. Grady? Yes? I'm Dr. Cowley. How is he? Well, he's stable now. Maybe a few days before he's out of the woods. We're having him monitored. Somebody's going to be sitting beside him and looking at him at all times. Uh, so why don't you go home, and uh, we'll call you just as soon as something. Oh, uh, I'll wait here. We were monitoring patients on the hour. Now, nobody had ever done that before. It seemed to take up all our time, but we were learning. Every patient was different. Everyone was important. And everyone taught us something new.
Dr. Kalia doesn't look good. His VPP is beginning to go into VTAC. Jill, Jill, get the paddles. Ready. Synchronizer on. Stand back. One thousand, two thousand, three thousand, four thousand, five thousand. Come on, Grady. Come on. We're fighting like mad for you. You gotta help us. Will you help us? 5,000. 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000. All indicators flat. 1,000, 2,000. Grady, will you help us, please, huh? 4,000. Come on. 5,000. All right, get me entry cardiac adrenaline. pressure. No pulse. Pronounce him dead. Seven fourteen. Here's Dr. Carley. Is he all right? Mrs. Grady, I'm sorry to have to tell you this, but your husband didn't make it. I thought this was a special place. Carol. He's dead? He didn't feel any pain, however. He just never woke up. He'll be all right. <laughs> Mrs. Grady, I can assure you that everything humanly possible was done. <laughs> Dr. Cowley is one of the finest cardiac surgeons in the country. Your husband was given the best medical care possible. The best. Why don't you go home? I can't. I mean, I don't want to. No, I mean, I can't. You know, things are happening around here that are maybe too important. I keep going over data, and I know that the answers are in there somewhere. But I've been getting a sense You know, we isolate death. We shouldn't do that. It's part of everybody's life. It has to be that. But I keep trying to accept it. And I hope maybe I can understand it if I do. 
And then maybe on the other hand, I'm just going senile. <laughs> and I sure can't walk away from it. Liz, uh, it's not good at home any longer. Everything between us is stretching farther and farther away. My daughter's almost grown up, and I know that every day I'm moving slowly but surely farther away from home and into this place. Does that make me You're a great man, Cowie. Great? <laughs> Come on. Look, I don't know about your marriage. I, you know, I'm sorry about it. But I do know that what's being accomplished here is great. <laughs> Everything possible was not done. It took nearly two hours to get the man there, and when he arrived, I did not have the people I needed. Ari, what are you talking about? Dr. Cowley, I want and to talk. And then I had to go find my own anesthesiologist. There's always one on call. On call? There's another delay I don't need. And I'm short of nurses and assisting surgeons who are still in training. Hey, just hold on. You're promising, my friend, but you haven't had enough practice yet. I fought to get this unit so we could learn something, not to just repeat the mistakes of history. Ari. I'll see that you get some help with the supplies, all right? And an anesthesiologist on staff, on duty. Do you know what that would cost? Money! Do you know what it would save? Vibes. That is a cheap shot. I apologize for that, Elton. I'm sorry. Do we get the anesthesiologist? I'll try. Maybe on a time-sharing basis. We really need one. I will try. I know you will. Thank you, sir. That was quite a performance. I don't just practice medicine, I practice politics. I'm forced to play games. I have just gotten a piece of an anesthesiologist. That's a beginning. And you took a piece out of me. What was that, Dr. Cowley? That was the truth, Dr. Silverthorne. Why don't you learn to use it, to live with it? I am human, I make mistakes. Does that cancel my MD? No. But I'm going to arrange for you to be rotated into another service in the main hospital, all right? You've got good hands, a good mind, but no fire in the belly. You'll have a terrific suburban practice, doctor. Good day. six more years to get our own building. Well, we were still part of the university hospital, but we started to hire more staff and build a team. And that's when you ran into him for the first time. Shock. Think of it as a pause in the act of dying. That's what I tell people. You think people die from accidents or heart attacks, but they really don't, not directly. All right, you want some of this? I'm trying to cut down. You sure? All right. Well, those things produce shock which is a sluggish or non-existent circulation, and that's what killed you. No oxygen. Well, what do you do about it? What's different here? You've been working on this for six years now. All right, you tell me. A patient comes in to see you. What do you do? What's the first thing? Well, first time. Take a history. I see. You say, won't you sit down, sir? And you sit in your chair, and you smile at him, and then you say very quietly and very slowly, have you ever had a heart attack, sir? 
Are you a diabetic? Is there cancer in your family? That's right. And then what? Then I examine him. Which prompts more questions. Where did that scar come from? Does that hurt? Have you always had those bumps? All right, now the history and the examination are done with. Then what do you do? I make a diagnosis. And then you can start to treat. Is that right? Except by then, our kind of patient is dead. We've got to get to them fast. Get inside them and ask questions later. Now, can't that be malpractice? Not when we keep him alive, Doctor. Trauma admission in one minute. What happened to the girl? She's got a head injury, fractured right radius, a left humerus clavicle, probably the right femur, and she's got abdominal injuries. What's her name? Lisa Silver. She's got an ID brace for that. Okay. What are you doing here, kid? This isn't your ship. I tried to bust out. Liz tackled me in a halt. Yeah, I'll bet. Where are her parents? We're trying to get in touch with them now. She was by herself on a bike. She was hit by that guy over there. Wendell Moore is his name. He lost control of his car, he hit a railing, and then her. He's probably drunk. Okay, Lisa. I think maybe we got a couple of broken bones. And maybe a little trouble with the tummy. I don't think she can hear you, Doc. Oh, she can hear me all right. She's unconscious, but deep down in it, she can hear every word I say. Catch you, honey. Cheryl, let's get some IVs now. Dr. Cowley. This man's chest is crushed and he's probably had a stroke. Has he been crossed and tucked yet? That's why he lost control, not drunk, only dying. That's right. Get him into the OR. Liz, you try and get in touch with the personal Let's physician, see what you can find out. Now. Tell him I have to go in right now. He's a little old. You think he can live through that? He can't live without it. She's coming around. You're in the hospital now, honey. You want these We're going to take good care of you. Can you take over, Lisa? All right. Give me another orderly. We're going to need somebody to bag him on the way to OR. And tell me the minute we hear from his doctor. Hey, Lisa. My name's Tex. I'm going to be your doctor. And cut that shirt away. Yeah, I thought I detected some movement yeah. on the right side. You set eyebrows on you, don't you? Pretty nose. Okay, gases, please. Pressure is 80 over 50. Yeah, we'd better get neurology up here as soon as we can to check him over. Mm. Look at that, Miguel. The tissue is poor. The lung has really been ripped up by that rib. Yeah, that part of the lung has almost been destroyed. And it's going to be a long night, ladies and gentlemen. The odds become very long with somebody this old. And I had a date. Oh, what's the matter, Dr. Aruba? Won't she wait for you? Of course she will, Liz. The only question is, with who? Pick up. I'll turn ahead a bit so I can have a look. Healthy tissue, young bones. Won't even be a scar, on my face at least. Hope they can patch up a bicycle is good. I could ask that trooper to bring it in for you. I saw the way he gave you the once over. I'm sure he'd do a favor for you and bring it in. I don't date cops. They're always in too much of a hurry. I would just concentrate on Lisa. She's a little young for this debate. Stay cool, honey. Let's see what's going on in that belly. Jill, the parents have arrived. They're waiting in the family service area for you, doctor. Lisa is sedated right now, so why don't you two go home, get some rest yourself, and you can see her in the critical care recovery unit in the morning. Um, will there be, uh, you know, scars? No, not on her face. She'll be fine. She did real well. She's a sweetie. Thank you, doctor. Oh, please. Excuse me, doctor. I'm Wendell Moore's sister. They notified me that he was in an accident. 
Yeah, uh, I'll sit down. Excuse me. Is it uh, Mrs.? Uh, miss. Well, he has suffered a stroke, ma'am, and that is what caused the accident. He's in surgery right now, and it is pretty serious. I, I understand, Doctor. Thank you. Oh, I will be quite all right. We'll keep you in the know. Baby's fine. Okay, let's open that other chest pack, okay? Get out the clamps and the short pickup. No, we have enough, but to Should check I on neurology, I should have been here by now. Changing IVs. You can also get another couple of minutes in here. Yes. We just got some data back on Mr. Moore from his doctor. It seems that Mr. Moore has had a recent stroke, and his doctor indicated it would be risky to operate. He's 70 years old. Fresh is 95 over 70, and he's stable. 70 years old and tough as a boot, aren't you, sir? <laughs> and indicated or not, here we are. Now, tie that off, will you, Miguel? Got it. High risk, high reward. Mr. Moore, I think you've made it. Close him up, huh? Thank you. When they brought Lise in, they said she was in shock. I'm sure the doctors have taken care of that, Mr. Silver. But my wife, she's had quite a shock, too, with all this happening. Of course. But you see, it isn't the same thing. Your wife has had an emotional shock, a, a psychological jolt. Lisa has had a physical shock to her system. What does that mean? Let me try to explain to you and your wife. We're dealing with people in terrible pain. Oh, it's tough to live with every day. It's, um, well, it consumes you. There's no home life. Do you know how many doctors here are divorced? So we all look for a release. Cowley paints, collects cars, builds model airplanes. Jill Jackson, well, Jill leads a pretty fast life outside of the hospital. But we fight the fatigue and the tension. Some of us better than others. How's everything going in there? Fine. Lisa gonna be okay? Who? Lisa, Lisa, the little girl. Yeah, she's gonna make it. Great, great. It's a great place you got here. How do you like your new premises? building. How do you like it? Fine. I still don't understand why you have to keep all these cars outside. I got two or three more in the garage. Since we sold the house, I don't know where to keep the things. What's it been, four or five months now? Uh, since the separation? Yeah. Now about six, I think. All the paperwork's done. Nobody hates anybody. It's all been cauterized very efficiently. But you got the cars. Oh, boy, did I get the cars. <laughs> That's about all I got. And the trauma center. The trauma center, my dear, is my mistress. <laughs> Jill? Jill! Hi, kid. Is something wrong? <sighs> I'm glad you're both here. I, I wanted to talk. You all right? Just want to talk. Okay, we'll talk. Why don't we go inside? Huh? I don't know. Do you, uh... Do you think I'm burning out? <laughs> We've been through this such a long time, and we all know the pressure. 
We all feel the same way. I know, I know, but I mean, I find myself just walking the streets after my shift, looking for lights, some laughing. I, <laughs> I don't know. Jill, come on. What's on your mind? What are you thinking about? Maybe leaving? I was thinking maybe I'd go to Las Vegas. <sighs> Why would anyone want to go to Las Vegas? Well, I can think of a couple of reasons. <laughs> it's alive there, right? Right. Well, here it's so... Dead? Yeah. Depressing. You know. Yeah, I know. All we see is... Uh... Mutilation, people dying. I never get to see a new baby. I never even get to just fix a cut finger. We all feel that kind of pressure. You just tell us what we can do and we're yours. I don't want to leave. Good. I know you can't speak, so listen up. Hmm? Now, you're going to be here in the critical care unit for another couple of weeks. And then some physical therapy. Sorry, doctor. It's time for Lisa's bath. I haven't finished yet, nurse. Now, Lisa, I'm not going to lie to you. You are going to have to work at that therapy. But if you do, you'll be able to play sports and dance and everything you want. Hmm? Golly. Yes. Oh, doctor. Good job of surgery on her, Lisa. Matter of fact, you're really quite adequate. <laughs> I've been thinking. In what direction? Well, I'd like to be a little more than adequate. I'd like to join your team. All right. Just like that. Just like that. You're a very good surgeon. But I've been more interested in the way you follow up on your surgery. Lisa, she's, she's a nice kid. Yeah. But, uh, Tex, nice or nasty, child or senile senescent, we've got a rule around here, and it goes something like this. Either treat the patient as a human being, or don't treat human being. You got it? I got it. You're the director. So I am. I'll arrange the paperwork as soon as I've seen my patient. It'll be good to have you with us. Yeah, I forgot to count your toes. Excuse me, doctor. Lisa hasn't had a bath yet, nor has she had her medication, which means no visitors. What are you talking about, nurse? She's my patient. I performed the surgery on her. This is a critical care unit, Doctor. Lisa Silver is my responsibility now. Who do you think you are? Andrea Davidson. And who's your superior? I am. Can I have a word with you, please? Look, let's get something straight. I don't want you talking to the nurses like that. Like what? Uh, look, uh, Tex, I'm sorry, but I forgot to tell you about rule number two, which is that nurses are to be treated as professionals. You know, equally. Uh, and equally, yes. Thank you very much. Now, you're the thoracic surgeon. Diagnosis, procedure, total authority in the OR, right? But when the patient comes up here and Andy takes over, you both work as a team, right? Since when do nurses make medical decisions? Every nurse I know makes a dozen a day. That's right. I agree with that. As a matter of fact, I call them little doctors. They are not little doctors. They're nurses. Doctors don't know how to nurse. Doctors determine medication and treatment. But every patient who comes to CCRU is assigned a primary nurse who is responsible for the care of that patient for, for as, as long, long as, as they're they are here. here. Right. Yes, sir. I mean, yes, ma'am. <laughs> Davidson's responsible here. 
Davidson's responsible here. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to start a war. Excuse me. Cece, are you? Hello, Mrs. Silver, it's Andy. Well, why don't you say hello to her? No, she can't speak to you yet, but she can hear every word you say. Uh-huh. Oh, hold on. It's Lisa's mother. Would you like to do the honors? Yes, ma'am. It's for you, listen up. Hello, Lisa. How are you? Are they taking good care of you, honey? Both Daddy and I love you very much. We miss you. Well, we know one reason for uh, unnecessary death after major surgery. Shock lung. You know, it drives me crazy when we can't oxygenate a patient and he drowns in his own fluids. Because of inefficient ventilators to breathe for the patient, eh? Yes, exactly. I mean, this is the... We have to use this... this piece of cheap medical machinery. I mean, that's what I've got to work with. How would you like to use a hacksaw instead of a scalpel? All right, what do you need? What do we need? Oh, this. The Engstrom 300, look. How much does it cost? Look, it's called the Engstrom. It's a beautiful piece of work. Look at that. Hmm? Oh. How much? Uh, with that, we really could do things. How much? There are not very many of those around. You know? How much? Beautiful thing, isn't it? How much? Well, it's a... Um, How much? It's a little over 6,000. Look at what... How much? Well, to be exact, it's 8,000. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we need three. This is embezzlement. You authorized the funds, Elton. For part-time nurses. The Ingstrom works full-time. It'll save lives. It'll give us data. It's absolutely necessary. You know perfectly well it's dangerous and unethical to use these mechanical breathers the way you want to. You plug them in before you, you're sure they'll need it. But we can't afford to weed, can we? Elton, uh, may I remind you that you're the one who really authorized the money? So it seems to me that uh, we're all in this together, wouldn't you say? I've spent my working life with doctors. They're all arrogant. But you... I can't cancel the order on that. But from now on, I am going to personally monitor your accounts from a paper clip on up. He'll do you all the harm he can, you know. <laughs> I think he will. Come on. Oh, he is right. Well, I believe he's right. He's got rules, but there is own rules for this kind of medicine. The fact is, we are keeping people alive here. Yeah, but I don't know why. Liz, I've seen young, strong men die. And now we got this 70-year-old guy. He's much more serious. He's doing just fine. I would like to know why. We would all like to know why. That's what we're doing here. I had 15 years experience as an army surgeon. Let me tell you something. I could never figure out why a certain percentage of my patients died. Chuck. Yes? Upstairs right now, we've got an 11-year-old girl and a 70-year-old man, both coming along very nicely, thank you. And why aren't they in shock? Tough or lucky. <laughs> well, that's not an answer, that's an evasion. Death isn't an event, it's a process. And something, sometimes in the accident or in the treatment, triggers that process and kills them. Well, what about the severity of accident? Well, look at the research data. That's not the total answer either. Severe accidents live, milder ones die. But not right away. A week or two later, they go into irreversible shock and they die. And you know why? Time. That's the connection. We didn't get to them fast enough. 
Time? How much time? Unfortunately, we haven't figured that out yet. But we do know the shorter amount of time, the better. So what do we do about it? To start with, we've got a good group here. But we have to develop it Where's into Jill? a really fine, crack team with a system that works almost perfectly so that we're totally ready, so that no patient ever has to wait for treatment. We've got to get patients in the right amount of time to the right place with the right people. And then we have a chance to give them a chance. Sorry about the foul up, Doc. Foul up. You know his name? Dave Ryerson. He's on the junior high football team. Look at that ball on the pilot that rammed into the bench. They took him to the university clinic. What? Yeah, later, half an hour before somebody noticed he had cracked ribs in the hemothorax. Yeah, it was chest full of fluid. Let's get him in the OR. Then we took him to Memorial Hospital. Boy, that Memorial Emergency is a total joke. They got one intern on duty. They got no staff. They got no trade. What are they doing? They saw him panic. Just about, Doc. And sent us right on over here. Poor kids had a complete tour. <laughs> well, he's young and he's strong. Maybe he'll get lucky. Thanks. You guys don't waste much time here, do you? Is 80 over 50 and dropping. He's been bleeding internally for hours. Talk about shock. You drop more gas, how's he doing? Still dropping. Snap. Right into that backfield again. Come on now. Come on. Come on, give me that. One more sponge. That's it. You're just fine. Get you back on that team again. Oh, give me that. Come on now. Come on, come on. That's it. Well, you just pretend like you're a cast your pass. I'm throwing it. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. All right, stop it. Just give me a chance. Give me a few more minutes. I can bring him back. He's young. No, Tex. He's dead. Come on now. Come on. Watch it. You never expect it to happen to, to you. It's pretty hard to believe. No, but he was fine this morning when he went to school. He died very quickly. I, I, don't, I don't think he felt any pain. But why couldn't you do something? I mean, I've heard about this place. You're supposed to save him. I, I, I wish I had the answer. I'm sorry. <laughs> Oh, I never should have let him play football. It's my fault. <laughs> oh. Sarah. 
I feel just as bad as she does. You can lean on me too, Doctor. That's why I'm here. That's halfway across the state. Get me there! Billy, get a cop there. Is there a police chopper nearby? We got an emergency. Kowalski's well, been hurt bad. Sure. You done yourself, huh, didn't you? Let's get some x-rays. Let's take a neck to rule out a spinal cord injury and the chest. Oh, no, what are you doing? Just part of the routine. Hold Relax, on, huh? Don't let go of it. Hold it. All right, move it. It's open. Where's x-ray? Let's get some IVs into him. On those x-rays, give me a lateral C-spine and a flat plated chest. Cover up. Are you all right? Yes. Okay, everybody, we'll shoot the first X-ray at the count of three. Well, now, you pass that mini lap with flying colors. Tex. Oh, my God. What's the matter? It looks like a torn aorta. Give me five IV Valium. Okay. What is it? What's wrong? Jane, your aorta, that's the largest artery coming out of your heart. It was torn when you hit, but it can be repaired in surgery. Are well, you going to be all right? I'm going to do the job myself. You trust me, don't you? OK. Jill? Where's Jill? Yes, it is. What is it you want, Elton? This hospital is about to welcome a new department head, uh, Dr. Jordan Tracy. Heard him? Yes, of course. He's a surgeon with a fine academic background. I understand he wants to head up a major hospital. Oh, he's not going to head our university hospital. Not yet. I'm just chief of surgery. 
As you know, the uh, trauma center is part of the surgery department. And that puts him in complete charge of it. And of you. Uh, yeah, just a minute. Hold up. Just a minute! Ah, hi, come in. Hi. What's the matter? I'm worried about Jill. Oh? Somebody saw her yesterday. Yeah? But she didn't come into work today. Well, did you phone her or her apartment? Yes, there was no answer. Uh, well, I better admit to you that I've been very worried about her myself. You know, the last four or five days, I've been getting reports that she's been absolutely weird. Yeah, I know. Look, uh, why don't you come over to her apartment with me? You mean right now? Yeah, yeah, I just feel like something's wrong. Oh, yeah, sure, why not? something. You're very special. I've heard of you, Dr. Cowley. As a matter of fact, you didn't need to use Sergeant Kowalski's name to get in to see me. Well, I don't like to take chances. Neither do I. <laughs> so we're both in the wrong profession. Right. Thank you. How can I help you? What do you know about the trauma center? Very little. But my men think your operation is good, and they handle a lot of the violent accidents in this state, so I trust their judgment. I'm sorry to have to tell you, sir, but they're wrong. Oh? Our operation is only fair. It could be a lot better. Gene Kowalski is alive because he was brought into us in minutes by helicopter. So? So, together, Superintendent, you and I, we can help to save a lot of lives. Oh, I see where you're going. 
But we only have two choppers and no free time. How would you like two more? A lot, a lot. But how? I've got a federal grant and some clout. Now, you have political access and a lot of clout. I'm suggesting a beneficial partnership. You get two more choppers. We get to place trained paramedics on all of them. That's all? And we get absolute priority in medical emergencies. That's a remarkable achievement. But the picture doesn't do you justice. <laughs> I must tell you, I'm really pleased to meet you. I've been looking forward to it, Dr. Tracy. Why don't you sit up? Thank you. Call me Jordan, please. I understand you lost one of your nurses. Yes, that's right. Cardiac arrest. We really don't know why. I'm awfully sorry. I have to tell you, I've read a number of your articles. I'm very impressed by what you've accomplished with the trauma unit. It's going to be exciting working with you. Well, thank you, Doctor. I'm glad it. Dr. Tracy's a first-class administrator. The place will run a lot smoother when he takes over. Oh, come on, Elton. I'm, I'm not taking over. I'll just be running some bureaucratic interference for you, freeing you up to do your work. Do you know what my work is, <clears throat> Dr. Tracy? Well, I'm afraid I'm not up on all of your projects, but uh, you just send me a memo on each one, and we'll talk them over. <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm really not very good at paperwork. That's all right. I am. And I'm going to give you some help in that direction. Sam! Sam, I want you to meet Dr. R. Adams Cowley, Sam Hooker. Hello. Doctor? No, hospital administrator. And he's good. I'm assigning Sam to your center. He'll handle all the paperwork and take it off your hands. I see. Aren't you afraid that I might uh, lose touch with things around here under these conditions? Not to worry. Anything you need to know, just ask Sam. <laughs> Or myself. Anytime, Dr. Cowley. <laughs> of course. Of course. <laughs> of course. Last couple of days, has it? Jill, and now this snake Tracy. Yeah, enough of that. Here's to us. To all of us. And most especially to Jill. To Jill. 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 Syscom, am I through? This is Syscom, go ahead. This is Trooper Harris. We got a multiple on Route 17 just by the Green Street off ramp. I'll get back to you. Roger, we'll wait word. They're yeah, just starting to get things to work right. Now, these people Chopper here, one, they coordinate please. where the helicopters are. Chopper 2, Chopper this is Syscom. Please stand by. We may have an emergency near Route 17 and Green Street. Syscom, this is Trooper Harris. Looks worse than we thought. Who makes the medical determination? In the field, the paramedics. That's practicing medicine. I can't accept that. Paramedics are trained. Cowley feels that most doctors are ignorant of on-the-spot emergency medicine. 
Pardon the arrogance. Siscon, this is Trooper Harris again. Go ahead. We've got two dead and two seriously injured. We'll need a second chopper. Roger, chopper on the way. Chopper two, this is Siscom. This is two, go ahead. We've got a medevac emergency, Route 17 in Green Street. Siscom, this is two, I've got the governor in here. You're closest to the scene, two. Roger. Sorry, governor, we've got a medevac call. I'll have to set you down, a radio police car to get you. Hey, hey wait a minute. Dr. McCall helped design these. That's enough. What are you? Doctor, please, it's it's not a regular airway. I told you. I don't know who Dr. McCall is, but I know it has to go deeper into the trachea. And don't you tell me anything. Look, it doesn't go down that way. Look, he's not breathing at all. His lips are turning blue. You got it down the wrong way. You miss it. We're not talking the same language, Doctor. How dare you make a charge like this, opening us up for a lawsuit? Because it's the truth. People are dying because of ignorance and incompetence and a pathetic attempt to practice trauma medicine. Sir, you try and understand that you cannot make accusations about other doctors like this. In the field, paramedics know what to do. Doctors don't have that training. The doctor was dead wrong. That is not the point! You can't do it in the papers! I already have. Come to check on me again? Dr. Cowley. No, it's just a social visit. Unless you'd rather read. Oh, no. 
I got plenty of time. Good. It is thanks to you guys. Yeah. Do you have any idea what you've done for us? What are you talking about? The helicopter. You're the one who gave us the idea. That's right, I gave you the idea. You sure did. <laughs> you know, I think you're right. I think uh, I'm getting smarter. No doubt about that. Absolutely. <laughs> Kowalski. Kowalski. Bring your crash cart. It's Kowalski. Got VTAC. No pressure. Mm-hmm. Come on, Jean. Stay with us. The pads, 200. Synchronized. Staying clear. Yeah, he's stabilizing. Well, I usually handle these crises all by myself. Nice to have such distinguished company. That thing telling us anything? Oh, yes. I'm starting to get some interesting correlations. I'm, I'm going back. Uh, you remember uh, Lisa Silvers and uh, Wendell Moore? Yeah, sure, I remember. What was the name of that young kid that one Tex got so upset about? Oh, yes, Rice, and I've got him in here, too. Good. Because they've got some thoughts that I want to try out. Uh-huh. Maybe we can narrow down the time element. How quickly do we have to get a patient here? How many hours? How many minutes? Okay, I'm uh, setting it up to correlate the mortality rate with the length of time before treatment. Exactly. Uh, the one common factor is severity. They were all pretty badly hurt. Did any of these patients die during surgery? Well, most of them got through that pretty successfully. Yeah, thank you, Lord. All right. Let's start with 12 hours, huh? That's from injury until surgery, right? Well, it's pretty well 100% fatality with that. Try six hours. Dr. Cowley, I have to talk to you. Not now, I'm busy. Can't you see that? This is important. What I'm doing is more important. Dr. Cowley, could we talk alone? No! Well, six hours isn't it? Try four hours. Yeah, try four. Four there. Yeah. The administrator's office has directed me to inform you that Dr. Tracy has brought charges against you. What? Professional insubordination. You'll have to appear before the administration operations committee. That's crazy. What does Tracy want? You fired from this hospital. All right, let's try three hours. Well, come on, come on. Come on, son, stay with me. We're almost there. We're taking her down to ICU. She's gonna be okay. We're gonna need a lot more room in here. There's lots of them coming in. Not too far. Not too 
with this one. Her name's Mary. She tried to bite me. Lucky she didn't. She did enough trouble after what she did to her husband and Porsche. Porsche isn't out of a deluxe VW. Let me up! You know who my Please husband is. Stop. Oh, We're just oh, trying to help you. I know, and it hurts you worse than it hurts me. Just take it easy. I can't. Why can't you leave me alone? We're gonna do a mini lap. Now listen, Mary, I think you've got some internal injuries. Now I'm gonna give you a little injection. It's a local anesthetic. Now I'm gonna make a small incision in your lower abdomen and find out what's going on in there, hmm? Local. If you cut me, I'll sue you! Has anybody talked to this lady's husband? Can't find him. We're still calling. Oh, well, that uh, contusion in the upper left quadrant is probably a ruptured spleen. Now, Mary, we feel it with the bruise in your abdomen and your blood pressure that you probably got some internal beating. Now, I need some permission to do that procedure I talked to you about. No. Mary, you know what's going to happen if I don't stop that internal bleeding? Go away. You're going to die. If I can't stop that internal bleeding, you are going to die, and it's going to hurt a long time before you die. Just give me a shot for the pain. We've given you all we can, and we'll give you some when it's over. But right now, i got to do the belly tap. Mary? I'm not really going to die, am I? You just might. There's a good chance. Now, I'm going to do that procedure. I'm going to do the belly tap. Is that okay? Mary, if it's not okay with you, if you don't say okay, I'm not going to do it. No, no. All right, if that's what you want. Wait. I don't want to die. That's up to you. All right. Go ahead. Let's go. Too much publicity, too many stories about miracle treatments. Now every time anybody gets hurt, or think they got hurt, right into shock trauma. Well, we've handled 60% more patients than last year. Doctor, you've hit us with everything from logic to emotion. <laughs> well, I deal in both. Well, we have to deal in reality, budgets, money. We have to deal with the legislature, and they have to deal with the university hospital. Ah, but you see, there's the problem. There are too many layers. Look, I need to deal directly to operate independently. Look, why don't you come down to shock trauma, see what we're doing, look us over. We just may do that. Yeah, we better, so we don't get left on the highway again. <laughs> look, I'd like to show you what we found last night. I'm afraid I'll get my chance. My wife's been taken to shock trauma. Mary? She's stable, but she's in pretty rough shape. Well, gentlemen, it's going to be a short operation. Her chances are excellent. That's because she got here fast. Shall we go to the waiting room? I'd rather stay here if it's okay. If you prefer. Uh, in that case, Governor, I've got something I'd like to show you, if you don't mind, you know, what we were discussing before. Mm -hmm. uh, doctor, uh, will you keep an eye on the Governor's aide, see that he's all right? This way, Governor. You can step a little closer if you like. Pressure is still falling. All right. Now, we've set this thing up with a mass of patient information to correlate the mortality rate with the length of time before treatment. To show exactly what? It shows that there is a point in time, a cutoff point, and inside that time, you have a very good chance of survival. And how long is that time? Well, I'm coming to that. Eventually. Well, I have to put on a little show for you, don't I, Governor? <laughs> I thought so. <laughs> Where was I? Well, you were about to tell me how long. Ah, yes, yes, yes. But not quite. Let's start with the premise that death is a process and it's triggered by shock. <laughs> what does that mean? What that means is that the body cells die. They stop functioning and they die because of lack of oxygen. The kidneys first, then the rest of the body, and finally the brain. The question is, how soon does that happen? You see, we found that people were recovering, but a week, two weeks later, they'd develop complications and die. And it became apparent that there was a very clear time limit involved. How long? Death starts when perfusion stops, when the body reacts instinctively, cuts off blood supply to the cells, and without food and oxygen, the cells soon develop an energy crisis and die. OK, how long? And then I thought back to the Korean War. 24 hours, myself, 12 hours. 12 hours, you say? 
All right, let's try 12 hours. 12 hours. I'm afraid you're going to be appalled at what you see. Almost 100% fatal. Let's try a quarter of that time. Let's try three hours. It's closer, but not yet. Let's go half of that. Let's go 90 minutes. Less than 90 minutes. Less. How long? One hour, Governor. 60 minutes. You watch this. golden hour, 60 precious minutes. Now, we can prove it now, Governor. We can prove it. If we can get to a patient inside that one hour, we can keep him alive. One miracle hour. Is that simple? Simple? Do you realize that every emergency room in the world will have to adjust to what you've found? Yes, I know. Now, Governor, if I had three teams of surgeons all working on different parts of the body at once, then do you realize I could Seems she's going to be fine. Oh, that's great, Tom. They're amazing. They're really amazing in there. <laughs> Thank you, Doctor. It's been quite an education. I'd like to talk to you. Oh, uh, what about it? Well, it's about my testimony at the hearing tomorrow. You mean Dr. Tracy hasn't given it to you yet? Now, look, I resent that, Dr. Cowley. And I resent having a one-man fifth column planted on me. But I can live with that. The real tragedy isn't me. It's what you and Tracy are doing to this sucker, to the practice of medicine. Here, I want you to be my guest. Data, facts, the details on what might have been a real breakthrough. But I. Oh, forget it. What am I wasting my time for? I want to make clear that this is an informal hearing, not a trial. We simply intend to discuss certain issues which have been raised by Dr. Tracy. I'm most anxious to hear them, sir. I'm 
I don't want to be vindictive, gentlemen. Nor do I feel that Dr. Cowley is incompetent. But he is careless. Sometimes very dangerously so. I've been concerned. So I've asked the administrator, Mr. Hooker, to go over the situation. I believe he can give us the facts. Correction, doctor. I know he can. Mr. Hooker? Gentlemen, I've observed Dr. Cowley's operation for some time now. And I've reviewed all of the reports, the staff filings, and the research data. I think it's possible that Dr. Cowley is one of the best medical scientists of our time. Our Adams Cowley has made a quantum leap in trauma medicine where other emergency rooms are losing 80% of their trauma cases, Cowley's center is reversing that trend. Last night, I read material on a, on a major discovery made by Dr. Cowley. I think it may be one of the most important developments in trauma medicine since the Korean War. But I'll let you gentlemen make up your own minds. As Dr. Cowley suggests, here are the facts. you here come here look at this it's sinking I have got some good news what Tom called and uh, the governor has just signed an executive order separating the center from the university you're not serious we're independent shock trauma is now yours Oh, I can't believe that. <laughs> If this was a real emergency, how would you know? We know what we're doing, sir. Oh, I'm sure you do. I wouldn't question that for a moment. But how do you know I haven't got something really seriously wrong with me? Hmm? A doctor will be over in a moment. 
just relaxed. Mm. Just relax. Our Cowley? Yes. You are our Cowley? Yes, I are our Cowley. You sprained your ankle, sir. <clears throat> yes. How did it happen? I fell down. You do have insurance. He goes right into the prison wing as soon as he's ready. Hold it. Let me have a look at her. This one with the head injury. Too late. Doctor, we can't make an identification of this one. Then we give her a nickname. Angie. What? Angie. That's Angela Barron. She's in my composition class. She's a music major. Angela Barron? I know her. I want a chest tube in and a mini lap. Nurse Miller, you're wanted at receiving. Nurse Miller. Uh, now what? We're gonna get hey! that ankle of yours X-ray. Take it easy, will you? What's happening? Blood pressure's dropping very rapidly. Oops, he bled out. Pump some fluid in. Come on, Paul. You better help put the sink too, pal. Let's have some fresh blood in here. I have very little pressure. Let's keep trying. More sterile sponges. Help me control this bleeding. Sponge. Hang on, Paul.
Doctor, he's gone. There are others waiting who need your attention. What's him up disconnect? We'll have to leave him here for a while. It's kind of busy outside. Okay. Okay, everybody who's not essential, get down to resuscitation. They just brought four more in from the same accident. and get the coroner's papers. Let's leave it for a while. All right, let's get her up to CCRU. Dave, will you help me? We've got to get the resuscitator downstairs. Pupils are five on the right, four on the left, back to reaction slugging. Okay. Oh, this is like Dr. Dr. Cowley. Yes. I have to tell you I'm impressed. I don't believe I heard what you said, sir. I'm impressed. Oh? I'm surprised. I mean it. I don't mean I like you. I'm not surprised. I don't like you at all. You have no concept of cooperation. Your idea of teamwork is everybody does it your way. Only if I'm right, sir. But you're always right, Doctor. Well, you can prove me wrong, Doctor. Be my oh, guest. Yeah. Out of the way, please, Dr. Cowley. Yes, what is it? Smoke inhalation. All right, I'll go with it. are useful. Mm. All right, curtain off part of the neuro wing. They have some empty beds. What happened to your foot? Who'd you kick? The director of nursing, now go. Okay, I'll bring him up in a minute. I gotta get somebody to help me. He's a big guy. Everybody back, right now. Come on, move, move. I don't know how, but he's still alive. Don't ask me to explain. Let's just get on with it. Blood, lots of blood. Let's get it in here, quick. Try be going in his leg. And the knife. And the knife. Pulse is building. Getting stronger all the time. Make it, Mr. Keo. One of us is going to have to buy the other a large drink or two. Three. Kind of makes you wonder who's dead and who's alive. I do believe you're going to make it, Mr. Keo. Oh, this is too much. Oh, my goodness. Isn't that incredible? Do you know what just happened in there? Sure. They saved him. <laughs> and I thought he was dead. Ah. After all this, 
Well, look how much we don't love. I only hope they hadn't told his family. Oh, I hope not, too. You know, that's, that's what we got to do, to find a better way to deal with the families, to help them handle things like this. Mm -hmm. And we've got to stop patients from dying in post-op. Mm -hmm. And if we could get TV cameras and helicopters and ambulances, we could see the injury. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. <laughs> Liz, um, why don't you see who I should take to lunch? Huh? <laughs> if we can get to you, allow you to breathe, and to stop your bleeding, and restore your blood pressure within an hour of your accident, then we can probably save you. Now, isn't that a golden hour? If we save an older person from cancer or heart disease, we can save only a few short years, maybe. But if we save a teenager from trauma, we save a whole lifetime.